Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, the righteous cry out and he will deliver. Come on, saints of God. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, I want to take the temperature of the room. I want to know who's in the room, who's grateful to be alive. Come on, who's grateful to still have breath in their body? Who's grateful to just be able to move their fingers and their toes? Come on, I want to get a sense of who's here. I want to get a sense of who knows the great Jehovah. Come on, have you been celebrating with Jehovah Jireh this week? Has he provided for you in a way that nobody would understand? Come on, has he been Jehovah Rapha for you? Has he been a healer and a, a, a deliverer? Come on, who has he been to you? I want to check the temperature today. I want to know how you're feeling. Have you have you seen somebody show up in your life? Somebody call to check on you, send you a text, make something for you. Have you seen God move? Come on, want to see who you are today. Are you a praiser? Are you a worshiper? Are you a runner? Are you a dancer? Come on, how do you feel today? I just want to take the temperature, see, because because God has been mighty faithful to me. He, he showed up in my quiet places. He's showed up in the silence. He's showed up when I didn't know which way to turn. So so I'm grateful today for the God that I serve. I, I, I'm grateful today that he's been who he's been to me. And, and he might not have been the same to you, but he's been a consistent God. He's been faithful and he's been true. He's been a living savior. Come on, come on. Some people are worshiping Buddha who sits in the same position and doesn't move. And some people have been worshiping uh, uh, Muhammad and some people have been worshiping somebody that died a long time ago. Joseph Smith is in the ground. Come on, daddy Grace, he's in the ground. But the God I serve, he got up on a Sunday morning with all power in his hands. So I'm grateful today. Is anybody in the room grateful with me? Come on, I feel like Minister Vaughn. I feel excited today because I serve a God that does not change. I serve a God that adjusts to my situation, but it's at his standard. Come on, he's the same Good God. Come on. I'm giving you just a chance right now to share this broadcast. I'm, I'm giving you a few minutes to get your keyboard right. I'm giving you a chance to get your spirit in operation because see, we've gone too long operating in how we feel. We've gone too long operating in our flesh. But today, I'm calling you out of your feelings. I want somebody to recognize the God that you serve moves and operates despite how you feel. Come on, where are the saints of God today? Where are the ones that don't care what people say, but are willing to do a dance in the middle of the restaurant? Willing to do a dance in the parking lot? Come on, I'll go forth on my porch. I know my neighbors think I'm crazy, but guess what? I'm crazy for a God that has always showed up for me. He, he keeps on showing up. He keeps on showing up for me. And so for that, for that, I'm going to give him praise. For that, I'm going to give him glory. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, y'all. Y'all, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there, but I want to make sure that you all understand that now is not the time to give up. Now is not the time to quit. Now is not the time to focus on what they're doing, what they're saying, what they didn't do, what they got wrong. Now is not the time. We are in a battle, saints of God, and we got to be ready. Come on. Come on. We got to be ready. Come on. Come on. Over the course of 2020, I, I felt in my spirit that, that God is preparing us for something big. Right. When he told me in 2019 that in 2020, the church needed to wake up because it was critical. I did not imagine a six month virtual experience. Come on. Can I tell the truth today? I did not imagine all of these ongoing challenges that we were going to have to face in this pandemic. I just knew that he was trying to get our attention. He was trying to set our mindsets in order. Come on, have you shared yet? He was trying to shake the body of Christ 
out of the way that we have always done things. Come on. He was trying to get us to deal with the hard places in our lives instead of continuing to live in them. Come on. He was trying to get us to stop repeating the same mistakes with the same people and finally move on. Come on, somebody. He was trying to get us to solidify our covenant relationship with him. He was speaking to a mindset, right? But for some of us, it was a challenge that you just could not meet on your own. You, you, you simply are too used to relying on the same strategies, falling into the same patterns and going back to the same comfortable places, right? The idea of change and advancement causes you anxiety and it causes you to question who God is. It's, it's too much to take on, right? Right, right. You, you, you've never had to, to discipline your own self to grow in the word, right? Because you've always had a building to go to. You, you've never had to pray yourself through without someone to lay hands on you physically because you've never had to have this level of accountability before. Come on. Some, some people have been struggling outside of the building. Why? Because we've had to do some things on our own. The Lord has been requiring you to grow up, my God, today. So when the Lord said to us, he said to the body of Christ, he said to Sozo Life Ministries, he said, wake up. Wake up. And when he said it, some struggled and some rebelled, right? We, we, we settled into what we wanted to do. Come on, we, we, we settled into what we knew how to do. We, we still hung out with the same people and we excused the same things. Come on, we kept playing real close, real dangerously close to the same traps, even though the Lord was saying to us, wake up. It's critical, right? He said it, he said it, he said it over and over again. And, and he sent words, lots of words about moving forward and prepare, preparing. Come on, last week, overseer, overseer said, consider the ants. She said, it's time to figure it out. It's time to get up and stop laying in your mess. Stop worrying about what was happening back then. She said, it's time to get moving, right? He sent a lot of words about strengthening your relationship with him. And they sounded good. They sounded good, saints of God. And, and we received them in a, in a churchy kind of way, but, but we often miss the critical part of it, right? And then, if that wasn't enough, he said weeks and weeks and weeks of teaching about deliverance. And he showed us how to get free and, and what it took for it to us to, to be okay and how to protect ourselves. And, and once again, once again, it sounded good, right? And we took notes, but, but we didn't quite recognize that God was working on our mindset. He was working on what was coming. He was trying to get us ready. He, he told us in 2019, come on, wake up. It's critical. Come on. Don't miss it. Don't miss what I'm saying. Don't don't miss what I'm telling you. Get yourself together. Come on. He was working on what was coming. And then war showed up. War showed up. And for some of us, it was war on your health. And, and, and some of us, it was war on your mind and, and your emotions. And, and some of us, it was war with your past and how you responded. And some of us, it was war on your family and your relationships. And some of us, it was war with your money and war on your finances. And, and some of us are coming out of a war. Come on. And, and some of us are just getting started in a battle. And some of us are in the midst of the battle, but it's right here that the Lord met me this week, right? He, he, he showed me so many of you crying out to him and asking him for peace. You were saying, when will it end, God? And how will I recover? And why this again? And why me, right? And, and, and what is this that I'm facing? And all of this uncertainty was in the air. And the Lord responded to me. He said something very simple as I was watching what he was showing me. And he said this. He said, I have a response 
for war. I have a response for war. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. God, have your way in this moment. Don't let them look at me, oh God, but let their ears be attuned to you, God. Let them hear what you are saying, God. I thank you that you have a word for your people. And I bind up every trick of the enemy that would try and get in the middle of the word and their ears. Have your way, God. Use me for your glory. I empty myself out, God, that you might fill me up. Do what you do. I am humbly submitted to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on. Before we get started in this word, I think it is appropriate to give you a definition of war. Okay, you see, a, a lot of us have boiled its meaning down to just a battle or a conflict between two nations or two parties, right? But the English word war came from an old Germanic word, warzo, warzo. And that word meant mixture or confusion. And it's related to an old Saxon word, warin, warin. And it means, listen to this, to confuse, to perplex, and to bring confusion. Come on, we, we simplify war when we just think about it as a battle between two nations or two parties, when in actuality, the enemy is using war to bring confusion and perplexity. He's trying to throw you off. And I, I want you to keep that in your mind as we go into the scripture, because what the enemy has been trying to do all along was throw you into a state of confusion. Come on. He wants to make you feel like you don't know if you're coming or going. Come on. He wants to throw uncertainty and lack of stability and fear into your mind so that you don't feel like you have what it takes to win. But the Lord is saying to you today, I have a response for war. <laughs> Come on. You need to share it. Come on. I know how to fight and I am assured the victory. Why? Because I created everything. So, so come on and turn with me now, <clears throat> excuse me, to Deuteronomy chapter 20. And we're going to start with verses one through four in the New King James Version. So read along with me as we do it. Here we go. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you. Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who, come on, brought you up from the land of Egypt. So it shall be, when you are on the verge of battle, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint, do not be afraid, and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. All right? So the book of Deuteronomy is comprised of several sermons and teachings given by Moses as the Israelites prepare to enter the promised land, okay? They have endured the wilderness and many ups and downs since leaving Egypt. And Moses is trying to prepare them for the promise, right? The people have been living on a promise for a long time and, and now it's, it's, it's in arm's reach, but, but yet, yet they still have to fight. Come on, has anybody on the live been holding on for dear life to the promises that were spoken over your life? Come on, has, has anybody been trying their very best to keep their focus because you just feel like your help is coming, but it's getting real hard to maintain your faith. Is anybody just holding on for dear life on that word that was spoken over you? Well, what you have to do is you have to understand that the entire Bible 
is continually reminding us that we are in a war. We are, as is Ephesians 6, 12 tells us, not battling with flesh and blood, but instead against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. We are constantly reminded that the only way to win is by employing whatever strategy the Lord gives us, right? To go off on your own means loss and death. And, and so it is imperative, saints of God, that we cultivate our trust in God. Cultivate our trust in God. Yes, we will get scared. Come on. And yes, what we see with our natural eye will offer some distractions, but we have to get to a place where our final landing spot is in our faith and trust in God. Come on, we've got to hold on, right? So verse one uh, of Deuteronomy 20, it says, when you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and people that are more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. You'll have to remember that Israel was a small nation, right? It was smaller than most all of the great kingdoms that came against them. They were rarely the superior ones, right? They were never the heavy favorite in the fight. No, they were always the one that looked like the underdog. So when they went out to battle, the description usually included horses and chariots and way more men than they had, right? The enemy always looked like it was stacked up. But listen to me when I say this, they always had something that we also have, we as the body of Christ, we as the adopted ones in the family of God, we also have this, but we often fail to put it into practice. Well, I hear you, what is it, pastor? They had a clear command from the Lord to not fear. Hear me now. They were given a command to not fear what any military person would automatically fear, right? Greater numbers, greater weapons, greater technology. They, all of these things they should have feared, right? They, they should have been afraid. You see, that's where some of you may find yourself right now. The battle looks very lopsided in your natural eye, right? Your credit score is, is real low. Your, your resume does not stack up. Your diagnosis is grave. Your past is real dark. But you have a word today, saints of God, from the Lord, do not fear. So what do you do with that? What do you do? Well, the Bible says that the Israelites were given a reason not to fear. This is, this is the good part. You see, the Lord doesn't set them up. He doesn't set you up with a false scripture. Nope. He acknowledges that the odds look bad. Come on. Yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of enemies and they got a whole lot of weapons, right? It, it, it looks bad. And, and the Lord doesn't play play. He doesn't say, yeah, it's grass and flowers and birds are singing. No, he said it looks bad. The horses are there, the, the chariots are there, and they got a whole lot of folks. But God asked them to recognize that there is a greater fact in play. See, we like to look at facts, right? We, we see all the stuff. We, we see the diagnosis. We, we see what the people said, and we see the Facebook posts, and we see the Instagram posts. But, but God wants you to recognize that there's something greater than the social media facts. There's something greater than people's facts. And that is this. And I want you to get it. Come on. The Lord, your God is with you. Oh my. Oh my. Come on. Somebody needs to stop right there and do a dance. Come on. Somebody needs to put a praise on it with me. Come on, put in the comments. God is with me. What I buy show you and I must see it. Come on, God is with. I, I, I need. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pause for a minute, see, because 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 I'm a little bit ahead of y'all. Because see, I've been I've been I've been warring with this. God is with me. Sometimes it it looks real bad and it and it feels real hard. You have to encourage yourself and remind yourself. 
God is with me. Come on, Paul said it in Romans 8, 31, if God be for us, come on, who can be against us? God is with you. Come on, you and God, come on, you and God makes you unbeatable. Come on, you and God makes you the favorite in the fight. You and God means you cannot lose. Saints of God, God is with you. Come on, verse one goes on to remind the people that the God that Moses was referring to was the same God that brought them out of Egypt. Listen, he already gave you a reason not to fight, not to fear, right? And now, right, he, he, he told you he's with you. He said he's with you. That's the reason not to fear. But now he's giving you evidence. Come on. He, he's reminding you that he is not asking you to trust him based on hope. Come on. He's not asking you to trust him on a wish. No, he's reminding you, thanks to God, to check his record. Woo! Check his record receipts. Come on. Come on. He's reminding you of who he is. He's he's reminding you to go back and see how he has proven himself present and mighty before. Come on. The same God that handled your childhood abuse can handle your debt. Come on. The same God that handled your bad marriage can handle your depression. Come on. The same God that handled your grief can handle your health issues. He has a track record. Come on, somebody. He has a track record that can be trusted. Come on. Somebody needs to say, I'm going to trust his record. Check his receipts. Come on, somebody. Listen to me. The Lord has a response to war. He has a response to war. So verses two through four, the priests come forward, right? And they come and they encourage the people and, and, and as they're getting ready to go into war. And, and they're telling them, be encouraged. Be encouraged, right? So you have to understand the priests didn't fight, right? The, the, the priests didn't fight, but they encouraged the people. The priests did not fight in the battle. The, the, the battle was between the people and the enemy, but uh, the, the, the priests didn't get into it, right? But the Lord will send somebody to encourage you as you battle, as you fight. Don't, don't be so grown that you can't hear and heed what the Lord says to you before the battle really gets going. And even when it's raging real high, you, you, you see, you gotta think back, think back to how, how I started out this word with a reminder that the Lord sent the words. He sent the words to prepare us, but a whole lot of us missed them, right? We, we were present with them, but we didn't hold on to them, right? In this season, in this season right now, you have got to stand on the prophetic words and the sermons that have spoken to and ministered to your soul and your spirit. You need to review your notes. You need to re-listen to them until your faith is built up, until you can stand on them when the pressure gets high. Why? Because the Lord has embedded all the power, all the encouragement that you need in the words he's spoken over your life. Come on, you might not have the proof yet, but you have a promise. That's what the good apostle Clack says. You have a promise. My God, today, he already spoke these things over your life. You have to remember that the Lord does not send us into battle unequipped. No, 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 no. He's not that kind of God, see? He knew who you were before you were in your mama's womb. Come on, come on, overseer. He knew who you were before you were in Mother Johnson's womb. He knew who you would be. He knew what you would face and he knew where you would have to go. So if he knew all of that, saints of God, do you really believe that he would not have put the necessary tools in place for you to handle them? I'll wait. Do you really believe that? Come on, see, our problem is that we have the tools, but we spend so much time doubting that they're really ours that we leave them untouched, right? Have the gift of tongues, but don't want nobody to hear them. Come on, have the gift of intercession, but worried about what people will think about our prayers, right? Have the gift of healing, but scared of people and what they'll think. They'll think that we're crazy, right? Got all of this power, 
but don't know what about it. see it because we're scared of what they'll think. Listen, the battle is waging, saints of God, and it's time to get into the fight. It's time to battle. Verse four says that the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Man of God, man of God, help Lord. Woman of God, be strong and very courageous. Come on, overseer, this is her favorite. Be strong and very courageous for he is with you. He is fighting for you. And guess what, saints of God? He has one purpose. He said it in verse four, and that is this, to save you. Come on, to save you. Come on, I'm here to encourage you today. The enemies might be big and the war might be long, but he is with you and he does not lose, saints of God. He does not lose. The Israelites never lost. They never lost when they followed the instructions of the Lord. When they were obedient and trusted him with their fight, they always won. They only ran into problems when they did their own thing even if the odds were in their favor. See, that's, that's where we mess up, saints of God. The Lord will say, I'm going to fight this battle for you. I've got it, don't worry. But we go running off on our own and we miss it. Listen to me, the Lord has a response for war. The Lord has a response for war. I hear, I hear you, Pastor, I, 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 I hear you, Pastor, but this thing is hard. and. And I feel so alone in the fight and, and, and I'm struggling. Well, can I tell you what the Lord had the Israelites to do? Can I tell you? you? You see, you would think that he would increase their numbers, right? You would think that he would get the uh, more people to join, you know, have a secret uh, army pop out of nowhere or, or something. But no, that's not what he did. Let me tell you what the Lord started to do. He began to consolidate. He began to consolidate. He had them look at their team and remove anyone that had business left unfinished. Come on, look at verse five. It says, then the officer shall speak to the people saying, what man is there who has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it. Verse six, also, what man is there who has planted a vineyard and has not eaten of it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat it. And what man is there who is betrothed to a woman and has not married her? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man marry her. Some of you are still operating with unstable folks. Hmm. Let me just let me just block my sweat. Some of you are still operating with unstable folks in unstable situations in unstable conditions. The Lord did not want the people going through a war. Listen to me, carrying people that would be distracted by other things calling their attention. Why then? Do you think it's a good idea to keep carrying people and situations that distract you from coming out of your battle well? Why do you keep funding your cousin's pipe dreams with your business money? Why do you keep giving away your wisdom and your time and your gifts to people that don't appreciate it? Just grab it, take it, use it, and don't tell you thank you. Why do you keep entertaining foolishness when you have a battle to fight? The Lord sent them home. He said, send them home. They have things that they need to clean up, and we don't need the distractions. Come on, somebody, send them home. Somebody put it in the comments. Send them home. Then he went for the folks. Oh, my, because listen. We ain't going to like this. Then he went for the folks who were not emotionally prepared or mature enough for the battle. Come on, look at verse eight. Verse eight says the officer shall speak further to the people and say, what man is there who is fearful and faint hearted? Let him go and return to his house. 
lest the heart of his brethren faint like his heart. Listen, listen, saints. It is fine. I'm talking to myself right here. It's fine to mentor and it's fine to encourage, but it is not okay to keep carrying folks that will affect your fight. Come on. The Lord made sure the officers sent home the ones that always have a negative word. Come on. Always got the fearful response. Come on. The weak ones. The ones you have to hold up when they should be holding you up. Come on. The ones that say, you you sure you want to do that? Or uh, 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 maybe it'll be better if you just, come on. You, you, you don't need to go. Come on. Send them home. Send them home. You don't need fear in the fight. You don't need the spiritually immature in your war. Listen, listen, I'm not telling you to leave those folks behind in your prayer life. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm not telling you that you can't encourage them. But when you are in a war, when you are fighting, you don't have time for those that will bring their fear and immaturity and distract you from the fight. Nope. It's time, saints of God, it's time to make the hard call and the difficult decision. It's time to evaluate your army. It's time to evaluate your crew. It's time to look in your circle. Send them home. Send them home, right? Verse 9 says, and so it shall be when the officers have finished speaking to the people that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. The Lord then had them to use who was left. After he got rid of the foolishness, he said, now we're going to choose some leaders. Now we're going to get this thing going, right? What is this saying to you about what God values? He values the heart of the people. If you're fighting a battle, you need to trust God and not numbers. Because he's not looking at the numbers. He knows who he is. He knows that he can handle it. But he wants you to look around and see, I, 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 uh, I got to make sure that the army is filled with the ones that have the heart to fight. If you got a strong five, hey, you good. You good. Sometimes it's a strong three. And sometimes, saints of God, this is where people really get scared. But sometimes for a season, it might be one. It might be one. It might be the one that you can trust. And that won't be always. But sometimes it's the one, right? You, you cannot effectively fight with the strategies of the Lord when you are constantly distracted by the weak and the fearful. You cannot do it. Y'all remember Gideon back in Judges or forward in Judges 7? Gideon was the underdog. Gideon wasn't even sure of his own worthiness to fight for God. But God took the army uh, from over 30,000 down to 300. And with that 300, God gave him the victory with an army that was willing to get in the trenches and do the necessary and not the cute. Listen, you don't need somebody that just got your back for social media. You don't need somebody that just shows up when they like your post. You don't need somebody that just likes you because because of what you you did or what you put out. Come on, Elder Cozart's about to put out a book. Be careful for the crew that comes running like, oh, sis, let me get in now. I, I, I want to follow you. See, be careful about those folks. Be careful that you don't get distracted by the ones that just want to be cute. Come on, the Lord has a response for war. He got a response for war. See, the, the rest of this chapter, God gives the people instructions on how to fight the war, how to conduct their war. Because, see, God is always very clear about how to battle. But what he wanted me to highlight to you today is the fact that he is with you. He's with you. Too many of you have been challenged by a battle with the enemy and you struggle to come to a place of peace. You struggle with how to navigate the ups and downs and the uncertainty. Well, the Lord sent me today to let you know that he is in control. He is simply asking for your trust. He's simply asking for your obedience. And he's asking for you to be available. Come on. Available to grow and obey his instructions. He's asking you, saints of God, 
for you to evict fear from your vocabulary. Why? Because he is with you. He is upholding you with his righteous right hand. He is covering you and he is shielding you. He has already seen the final battle and the outcome is assured. Can I can I just speak to your battles today? Come on, can I speak to your battles, you strongholds of trauma, you must be loose today. You generational curse of divorce and marital strife, you must be burned up today. You foul spirit of depression and isolation, you must be disintegrated today. You demon of sickness and disease, the blood of Jesus is against you today, saints of God. The Lord has a response for war and it is a declaration do not fear for i am with you i am with you he says to you i am here to fight for you i'm here to heal i'm here to set free i'm here to endorse and i'm here to redeem i am the lord thy god and i am able to defeat whatever comes against you oh god we thank you today for being the god that can turn a situation on a dime we thank you god for being the kind of god that shows up every time so i'm speaking to that fear that has been your that's been coming back up every time you tried to move forward every time you tried to advance it tapped you on the shoulder then it said hey 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 you don't got what it takes Hey, 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 they don't know what's wrong with you. Hey, 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 you don't have any friends. Hey, 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 nobody's with you. Well, let me tell you something. The Lord thy God is with you. You have no reason to fear. You have no reason to fear. You got evidence. Come on, check the receipts. The Lord your God is with you. Do not fear. He is with you. Oh, my sword, I my shed. Come on. I need somebody to grab hold of that right there. Whenever the enemy comes, whenever he brings up a, a standard against you, you say to that demon, you say, God is with me. Huh? Get back, Satan. I don't have time for you today. Come on. When the doctor says something that doesn't sound agreeable, thank you so much for that information. I'm going to pass that on to the great strategist. I'm going to go ahead and pass that on to my God because, see, he is the healer and he can handle that thing. So you go ahead. Thank you so much. I needed the information. Why? Because I need to lay that stuff out before the Lord. I need to lay every little thing that you said so I can let the Lord know who he's fighting for me. I need somebody to speak to their situation. I need somebody to speak to their trauma. Speak to the things that have tortured you in your mind. The Lord thy God is with you. And he is covering your situation. He has a response for war. Come on, he sent me today to encourage you in your most holy faith to encourage you that he is with you. There is no need to fear. You got evidence. The same God, Lord, I'm my soul. The same God that showed up. Huh. The same God that, that showed up in your situation last year. The same God that showed up in your situation at 18. The same God that didn't let you die in your mess. The same God is with you. And he's willing to fight. Come on. You just got to. I take my hands off of God because you got the master plan. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, wherever you are. Say the Lord God is with me. Come on. That's our celebration. That's how we how we finish this thing. The God is with me. Thank you for being with me, God. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with me. The Lord thy God is with you. Oh my so I believe, believe it. You said it. You said it. If you say I'm free in my mind, if you said it, yeah. You believe it. Yeah. If you said it.